after 9 a.m., probably going on 10 a.m. on Saturday, May 15th. Um, and I am going to trim all of my tomato plants. Um, by the time I'm done, they'll probably be looking half naked, I guess you would say. And I'm actually um, going to make sure I wear gloves because for some reason, not the tomato, but the plant itself, um, usually by the time I get in the house, I'm itching from um, touching the plant. So um, I'm going to make sure I wear gloves when I'm pruning it. Now, what I'm trying to do is keep the uh, main stem, the flowers that are on the main stem. If I don't see anything growing off of any other branch, um, it's going to, it's going to, I'm going to cut it off because I want to give all the energy to the main stem and the, and the potential fruit that's going to um, grow on that stem. And also I want to make sure the fruit has a lot of um, air going through it. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, then it's going to heat up for a day or two and it's going to go right back down again. So I may have to cover up my um, my loofahs and my tomato plants again. Like I said, weather in California is really, really weird. So um, let's go ahead and and get started um, on this.
we have pollination. Um, I see a little green baby tomato right here. I was actually kind of concerned, but um, it looks like we got one and it was hidden in here. Usually these go for the flowers that they could see, but somehow one under here got pollinated. Wait, it looks like two. Looks like we got two that got pollinated. So those are two cherry tomatoes. Let me look over here. I didn't see anything over here. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm happy I decided to come out and, and do these today. Okay, so let's get back to the, whew, the pruning. trimming and um, and giving energy to the plant in the places that it needs to be giving energy to so let's get on back to this
Well, this one grew a little wonky. The main stem is way down here. And either this one or this one should have been the main stem. Well, all of these stems have grown flowers on them. So what I did was that I just really cut around um, the branches that didn't have flowers. And I am going to take um, some of these ties and just tie these to the, um, to the tomato wrap because I really don't, I mean, if they're producing something, I don't want to, I don't want to get rid of them. I'm looking at this one right here. looks like it's producing one flower. And then um, if I see that those flowers don't produce anything, then I'll cut them off. But yeah, this one grew a little wonky. So once I'm done putting everything, I'm gonna come back and put ties on um, certain leaves and branches and stuff that um, are just growing out. Um, a little weird. that have holes in them. And then I seen a tiny little baby hornworm 
like falling down and I just kept spraying, 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 spraying and spraying the hornworm. So um, this is another reason why it's good to go in and um, trim your tomato plants because especially indeterminates like these, because they tend to get out of control. And as you can see, these are in a square and I can't see everything that's in the middle um, going on. This one hasn't really flowered yet, but I still cut it down real good. This one's flowering. You saw I had two tomatoes on that one over there and I see little flowers in the middle. So it's really good that I am actually getting in here and that I bought my neem oil with me to kind of just stay on top of stuff. Um, lots of little roly polies, lots of mushrooms, which means, you know, we know the soil is good. I'm going to hit this one too. And um, you're really not supposed to get the leaves wet, but there's really no fruit on it right now. And um, yeah, so now I'm going to get to these um, other, these other four. But there's flowers in there. Um, and I'm happy I got those leaves because there was a lot of leaves that had holes, you guys. So um, this is actually a, um, a good thing. So let me go ahead and continue to um, check my um, check my tomato plants because these things um, they will grow they will grow out of control on you. So let me go ahead and keep continuing.
spoke. I, I'm sitting up here talking and wasn't even on. Anyway, um, this is my second year growing tomatoes. And once I grew tomatoes last year, I said, let me read up and learn a little bit more. And you may be thinking that I'm cutting off too much. My first year growing tomato plants, I grew them in my veggie pot over there where I um, just um, planted wildflowers and stuff. And let me tell you something. It was the hardest thing ever. I had string pulling one way, trying to keep the plant from overflowing. I had um, lots of hornworms. And the tree, and the tree, well, it's like a tree. The tomato plant just like overtook everything. And I told myself I was not gonna do that again and I was gonna keep up on it, and I am. Um, I think I'm gonna wait about one, two weeks and start putting the second cages on top. Um, zipped, use zip ties, put them together because these are growing really nice. And then after I prune them, even though today is not feeding day, tomorrow is, but it's going to rain, I think I may give these plants some um, some fish fertilizer, just because I'm, um, today, just because I'm cutting them and pruning them. One thing about tomato plants, they're very prolific. You could cut off a stem and plant it and another plant's gonna come. So I'm, I'm not really worried worried about me trimming them trust me these things are going to keep on getting bushy as long as they're healthy and growing and i might see something right here yep got it so um let me go ahead and keep on pruning these last two here
episodes with the tomato plants today. Um, I'm going to get some ties and kind of tie up some of these branches. I have some branches that are kind of coming outside the cages. I'm going to kind of try to gently push them in to the cages and um, tie them up. The only one I did not cut was that one I broke over here because it's just starting to come back. And then I'm going to get some um, 5 and 511, the fish emulsion and um, fertilizer. And I'm going to fertilize because I did just cut these, um, these tomato plants tremendously. And then next, I'm going to go ahead and plant some more sage and stuff um, over there. But people may be thinking, oh, she cut those plants back so far. These are indeterminate plants. You have to stay up on them. They will grow like crazy. And anything that didn't have a flower on it or attached to it, like I might even cut this right here, I took it off. Because I want to grow the plants for tomatoes, not for leaves. And then you have all those leaves and you see a tomato in there, you're kind of like digging around. Uh-uh, not this year. Uh, I cut it off. And on my husky cherry tomato plants, I already see two little tomatoes growing. So um, I have been eyeing these plants all week. I'm like, they're looking crazy. And this middle plant right here had leaves that had all types of holes and stuff in it. So and I've seen a baby hornworm crawling down. So I hope I sprayed it real good with neem oil. Um, last year, I didn't know what I was doing. I kind of know what I'm doing this year. I'm not messing around with these, um, with these tomato plants. I'm thinking about even going to the eggplant and kind of cutting those bottom leaves and um, checking stuff in there. So um, let me go ahead and um, and get to it, um, finish um, doing maintenance on my plants. We got an eggplant flower, you guys. Hopefully, um, it will get pollinated. I'm going to kind of pull up on it just a little bit. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, so um, I'm looking through the eggplants. I've only cut one or two. I've only cut one or two leaves. And um, I've just been spraying the under the leaves with um, neem oil because um, last year I did get a lot of um, green hornworms. And um, as you saw a few weeks ago, I did have some aphids, but I dealt with the aphids right away and I have not seen any more aphids, but I'm doing a just in case, especially since I've seen that flower. Um, yeah, so I really don't have to do too much of the eggplants right now, which is good as far as maintenance. They're looking really good and healthy. So I have two more eggplant um, plants to go ahead and check out. I have to laugh. I am so off today. I'm sitting up here thinking I'm making a video and ain't made nothing. So I'm about to start over. Okay. So right here looks like that may be a watermelon. Hopefully that will come to fruition. Um, I don't know. I went back there and I looked at that one. I didn't see anything, but it doesn't mean anything's not, not nothing's not there. Um, I did see a bee, oh, I'll say about 15 minutes ago, trying to go to my marigolds. So let me show you. I went and replanted more basil in the back, sage up here. I went and clipped the basil that was here because it was getting really big. As you can see, the marigolds are getting really big. Um, that sage back there has holes in it. That means um, pests have been getting to it and I'm not worried about it because that's what I want to happen. Um, I went and put fish fertilizer on all of the um, watermelon plants. Um, yeah, so they're doing good. I still have to tie a couple down, but I chopped them up and I don't feel bad about chopping them up because I was able to catch some stuff, especially with this middle one. Like I said before, it had, um, ho a lot of holes in the leaves, which means something was coming after it. And I'm happy I caught it before whatever it 
was happening jumped onto the other um, other tomato plants let me come around again all of the eggplants are um, looking good that is one of my cucumber plants coming up this is the bee balm that I planted um, I planted a marigold and I planted some wildflowers and it, it's it's doing good there are all of these you know I'm, I've been planting flowers around the garden conveniently so that bees can go all around and that's what I wanted on um, the nurstation plant the bottom ones I planted around the big one they're coming out now one thing about nurstations is that aphids like to attack it and I'm not going to be upset about that because if it takes away the aphids from attacking the plants that I want, I said go ahead and attack it. It's still green. I'm not tripping on it. It's going to be there. Okay, so this is some form of wildflower coming up. Got some wildflowers there, some over here, and the bee balm all around. Um, I planted wildflowers up in here, but nothing's um, really happening. But yeah, um, I've been planting everywhere. The greens, I'm really in shock and it's going to be cool. It's sunny outside, but it's not like real hot. So I'm gonna let these greens keep going because we are still in May gray. Some days it's 80 degrees, some days it's 60. So um, yeah, I'm gonna keep letting these collards just stay there look at my corn i'm happy with the corn no complaints more flowers in another convenient area marigolds bee balm i think it was just marigolds and bee balm and maybe a snapdragon um or two i see a little flower right there and again i planted flowers everywhere throughout the garden Something's eating at the cabbage. Could be snails coming at night, but that cabbage head is looking pretty big. I'm probably gonna cut it because it is gonna be hot soon. But it's it's in there. This one it's getting a little bit more firm. This one's got a cabbage head. So we're doing okay. Let me show you the squash. always have birds everywhere in my yard so all of these are buttercup one two three four five six seven eight nine ten i planted like 12 or 14 of them on this side was butternut and i'm not seeing anything yet and i planted about 10 or 12 were those. So I hope something starts popping up um, pretty soon. I didn't plant them that far down in the garden bed, but the buttercups are the seedlings that I had planted and they just smelled so good. So I'm hoping some more will pop up like in this area. And I really hope that the, the butternut will start popping up too because I know that I can make some really good soups and stuff or whatever so yeah let me show you the strawberries so i forgot to cut them yesterday i went in the house but look got strawberries i will be cutting them today that one's kind of pink i'm gonna leave it on there and turn red another one right here so i'm cutting strawberries every day every day and um that is about it for today i did not have that much to do today i did it um i just got to go tie up some of those um tomato plants and that's it i'm going in the house it's early i got the weekend to myself it's really not much more for me to do you know i planted the melons yesterday and um and i'm i'm good i'm gonna go in the house and chill and just um and just relax. I have a three-day weekend. Well, now it's down to two. 
and uh, I'm proud of myself. I got out here and did this, and I'm and I'm done. So, um, as I usually always say, for this Saturday, May 15th, be at peace with yourself, and please, please be peaceable with others. I love you all. Have a good weekend.